in the immortal words of Johnny Bean. Is this thing on? I guess we are live. What's happening, everybody? <laughs> What is going on, David Ennis? How you doing, my man? Thanks for jumping in. I did a sneak attack on you guys again today. How are you, Dave? Everything good? Let's see, we'll give it a couple minutes before we start. Uh, Clayton James Hicks, today is Wolfgang Wednesday. Yes, it is. It's definitely Wolfgang Wednesday. Unfortunately, we probably won't be doing too much discussion on the Wolfgangs today because the, um, the title of today's show is going to be the Guitars of the Diver Down Tour, the infamous Hide Your Sheep Tour. We're going to talk about the uh, guitars on that particular tour and we'll start off talking about uh, you know this one right here, the Frankenstrat. Um, but you're right, Clayton, uh, if it was Frankenstrat Friday, it'd probably be a better day, huh? <laughs> Uh, Dave, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. I uh, worked a police shift last night. Um, I worked the whole night through and then I did a detail this morning. Uh, came home, worked out, played a little guitar, took my dog for a walk in the woods and uh, yeah, it was great. It was a good day so I figured it'd be a good day to go live. It looks like we're going to get a little rain here in a few minutes so uh, just thought maybe it'd be kind of, you know, kind of a good afternoon to do a little bit of a um, do a little show, so um, see if we can do something in the uh, in the uh, diver down era. <laughs> bit of secrets there sounds a little kind of a little raw a little raspy um, that was originally played on the 12th string um, the 12th string guitar uh, Gibson and we'll talk about that in a little bit um, I'm running a, my Yamaha THR 10x um, but I'm running a different kind of a pattern a, a different setup so to speak um, a little bit different sound I'm not running the brown 2 um, it's a um, it's a different setting I found for kind of the, the earlier tones um, Oh good, 7 or 8, the audio is really loud. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> just say yes or no, because I tried to tweak it a little bit. Uh, just say yay or no, yay or nay. Audios are really loud, cool. I, I, it's better than being really, really quiet, I guess, which is what I'm used to. Um, but, um, so yeah, I figured we'd do, uh, do some, uh, some Diver Down stuff, talk about those guitars. We'll just give it another couple of minutes until everybody jumps in. But, um, and then we'll start going on it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm running this, this, uh, this new sound. I'm, I'm kind of digging it. It's real raw. It's got a lot more reverb on it, like hall reverb. And uh, Nick, how you doing, buddy? Uh, good to see you. Um, and, and if I was you, I'd go for that guitar. Definitely go for it. Now it's not a stealth, but those those PVs are just as good, man. That that's a USA. You can't pass that up, man. That's a great guitar. You're gonna love it. Um, but you'll kind of hear. I, I'm definitely getting that Hall kind of earlier Van Halen sound off the first few albums. You can kind of hear that. You know, real. getting that uh, too loud huh interesting well too loud or too quiet what are you gonna do um, oh Van Halen's playing in the background <laughs> oh well it's a Van Halen show so fuck them it's all about Van Halen so I'm playing them in the background I'm giving them credit so they can flag whatever they want but thanks for the heads up I did that on purpose, by the way, because I always like pushing the envelope, especially on my show. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> Let's
like I said, it's a Van Halen show, so I'll play fucking Van Halen as much as I want because I'm giving them kudos, so fuck it. And that is the green cup talk, I guess. They should be paying me for playing their music and talking about their guitars because they sure as hell ain't doing jack shit. Sammy and Mike are out freaking crushing it. So, by the way, if you guys saw the Instagram post, um, uh, they were warming up on Good Enough uh, on Instagram. That is so freaking, um, oh man, I'll tell you. It's so cool hearing them play that riff. It really is. It's awesome. If it's too loud, you're too old. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll start talking about it. It's good you guys are in here. Pete, how you doing, man? J708, my good friend. I'm glad you could jump in, Jay. Nick, um, Tom Fox, uh, David Ennis. Uh, we'll definitely be getting some more folks in here in a couple of minutes. But uh, we'll just start off with, um, you know, just a little diver down riffage. <laughs> That is a really hard riff to play. Hey Rob, the show looked great. Cool. Awesome. Um, that riff, the hang em high riff, to play it slow is easy. It's all just like double picks. He's, he's do Eddie's doing it all from the 7th fret. He's fretting the, uh, the low E on the 7th and he's fretting the D string on the 7th and he's muting the A string. And he's not wasting any pick, um, pick technique. He's basically going... <laughs> It's so hard to play. It's just the technique. Some days I can play it really good, and other days I just sound, it sounds like crap like that. Did. It's a really tough, tough technique, and he's got some really cool little fills. <laughs> He's got all these cool little fills in there. He's got some really cool stuff in there, but that main that main riff is just it, it's a friggin' bitch to play with. Right? It's tough, but um, kind of fun. Some like I said, some days I've got it, other days I just don't. It's kind of like the. It reminds me a lot of the I'm the one riff, you know, that that slow kind of well, it's fast, but if you practice it slow. <laughs> Something like that, but uh, it's just that it's just that you got to get that technique. You know, and it's the same thing with hang 'em high. It's tough. It's a tough one, but um, anyways, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to talk again about the uh, about the Diver Down tour. We're going to talk about the guitars that Eddie used. Um, uh, kind of a really cool um, cool era, and there was a lot of different guitars that kind of floated through. Um, but uh, first off, we'll talk about the Frankenstrap because this one um, is, is obviously prevalent, you know, throughout the entire. Um, the entire thing. Uh, let me put this down here so we don't get any buzzes. So the Frankenstrat guitar. Uh, this is present day right now. This is what it looks like today. You guys saw some pictures on Instagram. It has the you know the original, well one of the original necks. This is actually the neck that uh, was on the um, uh, Circles guitar back in the Fair Warning Tour. 
But uh, this neck was on this guitar before that, um, all kinds of different necks, but we'll focus on the Diver Down Tour. So, um, again, thanks for everybody for jumping in. I really appreciate it. Um, if you jump in in the middle and you end up missing something, just, just circle back to the beginning and we'll, you know, we'll hit it. Um, but uh, um, hopefully there's some good information in this. I'll try to hit as many things as I can. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on this guitar. Um, we'll talk about it and some of the different necks um, but uh, and some of the tremolos that were on it. But um, uh, I'm going to do a specific show on this particular guitar itself at a later time. And uh, let me just turn this down. There we go. I'm going to do a specific show on this guitar and we'll talk about when it was white and black, we'll talk about when it had a rosewood neck on it, the whole ball of wax, white pickguards and all that stuff, black pickguards. So um, we'll kind of just focus on this guitar in the Diver Down era, all right? So first off, um, we'll start with the Frankenstrat. Obviously he was playing the Frankenstrat. That had been a guitar that he played pretty much since, you know, prior to the first tour. Um, and like I said, if I'm missing anything, you guys jump right in. So as far as we know, in the beginning of the, of, of the Diver Down Tour, um, this, particular, um, uh, this particular guitar, the Frankenstrat, and I'll bring up some pictures here, had um, a 21 fret neck on it towards the beginning of the tour, okay? And it may or may not have been this neck. We're not really sure. I think it might have been this neck um, in the beginning of the Diver Down Tour. And then shortly thereafter, um, Eddie was finalizing his deal with Kramer, which um, was beginning to come into fruitation. And he was, uh, people could hear, um, you know, uh, they, they, could, they could hear the, um, the, the squawking at the NAM shows and all that because the Kramer, um, relationships kind of started happening around 82 or so. So around 1982, you know, that starts happening. And then around end of 82, 83, it, 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 it starts to become public. So right around the beginning of the Diver Down Tour, which started in 1982, um, Eddie started messing around with Kramer necks and also Kramer guitars, which we'll talk about. So the Frankenstrap, uh, I believe, like I said, had this neck on it because I think he pulled this neck off of the Circles guitar and repainted that to the Rasta, which we'll talk about. I think he pulled this neck off and I don't think it was in use for a while. It might have been on another guitar. It might have been back on the Rasta and then it came off again. I'm not really sure what happened to this neck, but it definitely stayed in his arsenal of guitars and parts and everything like that. And Eddie replaced this guitar um, neck with a Kramer strat head neck, okay, which essentially, other than having not having a Rockinger on it, was a 22 fret neck, all right, and it looked like this. It's called the lawsuit headstock. And the lawsuit headstock basically means uh, Kramer was copying the Fender headstock with a ball on the end here, all right, and had the Kramer logo. And they came with Gatto tuners most of the time. They were gold, and they started doing the Rockinger bridges with, with the nut, the clamp behind the nut, so to speak. But Eddie's um, Eddie had a couple of these guitars. Obviously, we'll talk about them. But Eddie's had a Floyd nut on it. All right, an R2 Floyd nut. And what he did was, again, we're talking specifically about the Frankenstrat right now. Okay. So I have a picture right here of Eddie with that neck on this guitar. And here it is, all right? Here's Eddie with the Frankenstrat. And I don't know if you guys can tell, so if I can zoom in. It's really glary, that's the one thing that's tough. But if you guys, there we go, you can kind of see. That's the headstock, and it says Kramer on it. It's got the Kramer logo, and that's the Strat Lawsuit headstock, all right? And if I back up, this is early in the Diver Down Tour, all right? So Eddie swapped the neck out, with the Kramer neck. Lawsuit headstock, Strat headstock, and for a short, short, short period of time, very short, almost I'm talking like maybe a couple of weeks if that, um, he removed the logo, he sanded it off, and you can see all kinds of pictures. Um, my jump poster up there has it, you can tell it was sanded off because the, where the logo would have been was, was very white. 
Um, we're not 100% sure why he sanded the logo off. I don't know. Um, maybe the deal hadn't quite finalized yet. Um, but, uh, you know, at that time, he wasn't really too keen on having the Kramer logo show. Um, so the guitar, the Frankenstrat, had that, had that lawsuit neck on it, but he sanded the logo off. Maybe because Kramer was getting sued or threatened to be sued unless they changed their profile to headstock. So maybe Eddie sanded it off just because of that. That's another, another thing. Um, and when Eddie was playing the uh, purple guitar, the multi-tape guitar, which we'll talk about, that also had a black piece of electrical tape over the Kramer logo for a short period of time. So, um, Kramer changes their, uh, their headstock design to a classic, the beak, chicken hawk neck, beak style neck that you guys all know about. Um, and that happened a little bit later in, in, in that year. The Strat head Kramer lawsuit headstocks are very hard to find. They're out there. But there wasn't a long, they didn't go for a very long run because, like I said, it was a, it was a, uh, um, uh, it was a, it was a, a legal type issue, so to speak. So Eddie had that neck on there for a long period of time, and now I'll show you a picture of that guitar neck when he had the logo sanded off. And let's see if we can find this here. All right, where are we here? I know I got it. I have them all right here saved. <laughs> I oh, thought I did. Oh well. There's a million pictures of this, so let me just show you. And this is the same exact neck with a logo sanded off. And let me see if I can find it. It's great to come prepared, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's a 22 fret neck. All right, 22 fret neck, same exact one. So Eddie was kind of liking that neck. He was definitely doing the Kramer thing now, and Kramer was pretty much everything. They were making these different guitars for him, which we'll talk about. But as far as the Frankie was concerned, it had that neck on it for a long period of time, most of the tour, all right? And then sometime after the Diver Down tour, Eddie swapped it out with a classic neck, which was the Chicken Hawk neck, all right? Um, the Duck Beak neck. And we got a picture of that right here. And you can see it's the Kramer Classic neck right here. It's hard, again, it's so glary, guys, I'm sorry, but it has the Kramer logo on it. All right. Now, we did that after the South American leg of the tour, which we're going to get into, and then we're going to talk about the Kramer ad guitar and all that. So the Frankenstrat starts out. 81, end of 81, probably with this neck on it, 21 fret neck, gets the Kramer um, lawsuit neck on it. They get into trouble, so he puts, uh, he sands the logo off, and continues to play it, 22 frets. Plays it for basically the whole majority of the Diver Down Tour. Then they went over to South America, okay? And they went over to South America, Kramer had finished the South American leg of the tour, Kramer had just finished this guitar for Eddie. And the guitar, I got a couple pictures here. And let's see, the guitar was called the Kramer Ad Guitar. And you guys have seen this picture, all right? It's in all the magazines. Basically what happened was, is, and we've talked about this guitar a little bit. Um, Michael Collins, what's going on, dude? Um, Eddie wanted a guitar like his Frankenstrat, but he wanted something with that hockey stick neck, which he really preferred, which was on the Shark guitar. So they built this guitar and they built the body out of an old Walker body. You can tell it has the, you know, it has the, uh, the real fat horns up top and bottom. It's a strat, strat body, obviously. But he really loved this neck on it, you know, the headstock. So he switches again. So now he kind of veers away from the stratty type headstocks and he's really kind of fallen for this hockey stick neck again. So Kramer builds him this guitar and Eddie really likes it. And uh, here's a couple of pictures in the Kramer factory. Again, it's hard to tell, it's hard to see. There's the ad guitar when it was being built and there's the Frankenstrat right next to it. All right, a couple cool pics of Ed standing there. And there's another one. 
you can tell the bodies. The, there's the body right there, unfinished, and here's here, oops, here's Eddie showing the headstock Kramer logo. So he's full blown Kramer right now, full blown Kramer. So they go on. Uh, they sign. If you read the book uh, Running with the Devil, the Noel Monk book, it talks about timelines and in, in, in the South American leg of the tour. Basically, the Diver Down tour was over. Um, however, they had agreed to do a South American leg, and they went over and did Caracas, Brazil, you know, which was Sao Paulo, um, Venezuela. They did a whole bunch of, I think they did like a, a seven or eight, maybe, maybe a little bit more uh, run over in South America. And Eddie had played this guitar exclusively for that South American leg. All right, this was his main guitar. And you really didn't see the Frankenstrat at all. You kind of put the Frankenstrat down. Basically, this guitar was hot off the press. They just finished it in Kramer. And then the factory, and Eddie had a hand on building it. There's pictures of it. I have more pictures than just that. And uh, they built it for him. And uh, like I said, it was in the same style as the, as, as the Frankie. It had an original whale tail Floyd on it, some gold hardware, kind of pick up here, probably a Gibson Path, uh, inactive pickup in the back, had this new 22 fret neck. It had shallower uh, uh, crown heads on it, uh, gold crown heads. Um, the back looked pretty much like this. Okay, this is about as accurate as I can see how the back looked. All right, Eddie did have this little uh, <laughs> um, string lock uh, unit on here, which wasn't even tightened down. And he left it there, but he was using the eye bolts. And on the back of the headstock, there was a sticker that said, Number One Edward Van Halen Model. And this was something that I got from David Nesdal years ago, and he had them professionally made. It came out great for our replicas. So um, this was his main guitar, painted by Paul Unker at Kramer, who we've talked a lot about, great guy. And uh, he played this guitar uh, all through the, uh, the Diver Down South American leg. All right, this was definitely what he really enjoyed. Really cool guitar, and this is my replica of it. After the South American leg of that tour, you didn't really see this guitar again. It kind of disappeared. Um, where is this guitar today? Well, at the end of the South American leg, uh, Eddie gave it to Rudy Laren, his guitar tech. And there's some pictures out there I have somewhere of Eddie where he actually signed the guitar right here over the seagulls. He says, to my best bud, Rudy, thanks for everything, man, or whatever. It's all signed in black Sharpie here. Rudy had the guitar for a while, and then Rudy apparently, I don't know if he sold it or he got rid of it, but it ended up in a few different hands, and from what I understand, the guitar is still out there today. I'm hearing that from a very reputable source. Um, I have not seen any pictures of it one of these days. I'm hoping it resurfaces, but I'm hearing it's still out there today, uh, the Kramer Ad guitar. So now we get to the South American leg of the tour, and... Um, um, Van Halen gets this, uh, this offer from uh, Steve Wozniak um, to host the US Festival, as you guys have read. And Van Halen ends up like getting a net figure of like a million dollars just for that one show. So everybody's seen the US Festival. But getting back to the Frankie again, the Frankie makes a reappearance. All right. And now the Frankie strap has, for that one show, has this neck on it, all right? The Kramer Pacer Classic Chicken Hawk Duck Beat Neck, as they call it. And all these necks are, guys, they're Strat necks. These are Stratocaster necks with a big ball and they come down. And all Kramer did was to alter them to get through the lawsuit piece, was they just shaved it down here and cut the ball off and make it look like that. That's all they are. These are all Strat necks that were just modified. That's what they were. Same exact thing. So Eddie's playing this guitar in the US Festival, all right? That guitar, he's playing the Frankie again and he's using the, uh, the chicken hawk neck, as Paul Unkert used to call it. And a couple pictures of that. We have it right here. I think I already showed this, but there it is again. It's got the Kramer logo on it. And this neck was bound to stay on there for probably a handful of years, okay? A couple other things real quick. Here's a picture of Ed, the South American leg, playing the Kramer Ad guitar. 
This is from the Sao Paulo gig. Some real cool up close shots of Ed playing it. Here's one of the back in Ed Solo. Really cool guitar. Very, very, very cool guitar. <clears throat> so, one other thing um, on the Frankenstrat before we move on to the other guitars of Diver Down. Um, and again, we're going to do a Frankenstrat uh, um, um, special on that particular guitar because that's there's a whole show in just itself. We got a whole bunch of other guitars to talk about in the show on Diver Down. Um, there's a picture and a few pictures backstage at the US Festival. All right, here's Eddie. All right, and they call this the Starfleet neck. All right, for some reason he had that neck on that guitar. All right, we don't really know why. Here's another picture of Ed at the back of the US Festival. It's a rosewood neck, all right, and it's got a three by three upside down headstock. It's a Dan Electro style, all right? And that particular neck is this one right here. All right, this is this neck, not this exact one, obviously. Uh, and if you back up a tour, okay, the Fair Warning Tour, we talked about this in my Fair Warning show I did a couple of weeks ago. The Rude guitar had a couple different necks on it. It had a maple 21 fret strat style neck, okay, probably a boogie bodies. But then Eddie stuck this neck on it for a very short period of time. And Eddie really loved these, these Dan Electro necks. This is like a Dan Electro style neck, all right? It's a 3x3 three three, uh, headstock design. Um, and kind of a, looks kind of upside down, basically, but for whatever reason, um, Eddie loved this neck. And he put this neck after the um, the fair warning tour. He kept the neck, um, probably put a, a, a maple neck back on the root, or just didn't even you know had nothing on the root. Actually, I think the root just stayed inoperable for a number of years without a neck on it. And for a very short period of time, maybe a day or so, or maybe just a very few hours. Um, well, actually, I take that back because. Prior to the US Festival, uh, Eddie did the Starfleet project with Brian May. And there's pictures of the Frankenstrat with that neck on there too. So that neck was probably on it for, I would say, maybe a few months maybe. Because Eddie really liked the feel of those necks. Like a star guitar had the, the 3x3, the Coke bottle. So I love those Dan Electro necks. They were just his favorite um, for a short period of time. And we know Eddie's always changing. He's always you know trying this out and trying that out. So. Uh, does the Starfleet project with Brian May and the next day's on there and right up until the US Festival, right at the US Festival, um, he has that guitar in that configuration and at some time at the last minute before they went live or that picture could have been a day before too, I mean it, it didn't necessarily have to be you know, hours before the gig, but sometime pr just prior to the show he put the Kramer Classic beak neck on that guitar. All right and uh, played the US Festival with it, and then we saw it in the jump video. So it made that next state on it right into 1984, okay? Um, I got some pictures up here on the wall of it, but I'm not gonna move my, my, uh, my unit here, otherwise it's gonna uh, never get it back where it's supposed to be. Um, and then that's basically it for the Frankie, for the Diver Down Tour, okay? And then we see the Frankie again, uh, a little bit in 84, 84 pre, you know, prior, he was using a little bit to record. He didn't use it in the uh, live. He had the 5150 at that point. But we still saw that Kramer neck on it, all right? And then we'll get into it but the, you know, at a later time. But this particular neck, like I said, we're going to do a special on the show. But then we saw this neck end up on the Frankenstrat, okay? The hockey stick neck. It's called the Tom Anderson neck because Tom Anderson did some work to the Frankie, which we'll be discussing. Um, sometime around the 87, 86, 87 era, and that's when that neck went on there and stayed right on there right up until 93. So that's the Frankenstrat. So the Frankenstrat had some serious neck changes um, throughout the Diver Down Tour. So Frankenstrat being his number one guitar, absolutely being the one that he played most of the time, and he played it on the VH1 Tour, VH2 Tour, uh, Women and Children First Tour, uh, Fair Warning, Diver Down, and then the Frankenstrat kind of got retired right after the recordings of 84. Um, there is a picture out there which we talked about in my 5150 show that Eddie uh, had the 5150 uh, at the US Festival. There's a picture of a backstage which is really cool. That's only been out for a few years. But uh, that kind of wraps up the Frankenstrat. So let's just see what we got for questions in here. 
real quick and then we'll continue on. Um, glad to have another live show. The Frankie looks awesome. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, um, like I said, we'll do a special show on that. I'm going to go through every little nick and dent and ding and detail because this is the best Frankie I've ever had. I'm so, so happy to have this. I mean, I've literally waited 20, 25 years to have a Frankie like this, kind of like my 5150. Um, but Nick is the, you know, Nick um, Amendalora. I'll give his name on my show. I don't like to give names on other people's shows, but I'm going to give Nick some kudos. Uh, he did a killer freaking job on it. But we'll be talking about that. Uh, yeah. Run through speakers, it's loud and sounds terrific. Rock on. Good, Alan. I appreciate that. I'm glad. It, I'm using that little speaker simulator I have. It seems to work good on my show. When I do Johnny shows or other people's shows, for some reason it doesn't sound that good um, on that show, so i got to make some different provisions. I'm going to pick Johnny's brain uh, one of these days. and uh, um, He actually was trying to help me right before the show, but I had to go live. I didn't have time to, to make any... Um, altercations but uh, glad it sounds good um, good evening Leon how you doing Johnny Bean he's here I knew we'd jump in what's going on my buddy uh, driving to Santa Cruz in a bit cool stopping in to say hey good to see you buddy hope to do one of your shows again real soon um, it's always a pleasure being on your show if you can you know hang out as long as you can Johnny um, we're talking about the diver down tour and the guitars we just got finished talking about the Frankie and the different neck mods it had and things like that as a matter of fact a couple of those pictures that I showed you were you know pictures that Johnny and I had been talking about prior to Luke Dave and, and Jay were the neck profiles hugely different on the different necks well I'm going to say yes, and the reason I say yes is the original neck on the Frankie, or not the original one, not the not the CBS style headstock one, but uh, this one of the second or third necks before the Kramer came along. Eddie had these strap necks, where in this one still the one that's on Frankie today, they're very fat feeling, they're very wide, they're asymmetrical. Uh, and they're really nice necks, but they have a very big feel to them. I, I like to refer to it as like a baseball battish feel. All right, I really like these necks. They're not overly uh, tall. They're they're pretty thin, but they are very wide. Okay, so the profiles on the Kramer necks that Eddie was going with. Okay, and I'll pull back both these down again. When Eddie went with Kramer, he changed. Okay, we talked about the Kramer Ad guitar. Okay, we talked about this guitar. And he started going with these hockey stick headstocks. He really liked those. All right. And the duck, the chicken hawk necks, okay, which is actually what the 5150 was made out of. We talked about that, but I don't want to get into that because that's a long story. They're a lot thinner. Okay, they're a lot thinner. And both of these necks, which were on the Frankenstrat, the, the jump neck we refer to as the jump neck, the US Festival neck. And the hockey stick neck, the Tom Anderson neck. This is the neck that Tom Anderson put on the Frankie when he when he um, re uh, refilled the Floyd Rose holes and redoweled them and redrilled them. They took the, the whale tail off and put a regular uh, uh, original Floyd on because when they originally drilled that for a Floyd back in 80, 1980, 81, eight, end of 1980, they they drilled the holes too wrong and the guitar could never be intonated right. And it was always out of tune. That's why you heard the Frankie a lot out of tune because the intonation was way off. So Tom Anderson fixed that, filled the holes, redrilled it, and again, we'll get into that in the Frankenstrap talk. But uh, um, this, this neck was the same thing, very thin profile, much thinner. So the Kramer necks were very, were known for that, okay? They're a lot thinner, so yes, the, the um, there's a different profile on them. And he went back to kind of a thinner neck, all right? And that's what the 5150 was. Um, is that the real David Nesdal? David Nesdal's here. David Nesdal is, in fact, the real David Nesdal. Nice to see you, Dave. Good to see my buddies. Um, so, again, that's the Frankenstrat. Now, let's switch guitars. Now, now we're going to talk about another guitar. Uh, we'll get back to the Kramers again because we got a bunch of Kramers to talk about because that was Eddie's main thing. Now, again, jumping back to tour, 1981, fair warning tour. This guy shows up to one of Eddie's shows. His name is Dave Petulot, and he's got this guitar to show Eddie. He actually had two of them, but I don't think Eddie got them both at the same time. He shows up with this little tiny mini Les Paul, like this, right? Tiny little Les Paul. 
There was one that was a red one, and then there was Eddie acquired another one, which was a natural one, and Eddie played the natural one more um, in the Diver Down Tour. And then he, for the 84 Tour, he played this red one a little bit. He said he liked the, the natural one a little bit more because the body was a little fatter, so I think he got a little bit more fuller of a sound. So Eddie gets this guitar. We'll just talk about it. They're both basically identical other than the, the tops on them a little bit different, but they're identical twins for the most part. Um, except the body on the other one was just a little thicker. But um, three quarter inch scale necks, all right. I'm not really fully sure all the hardware on them. I'm sure they were shallower tuners and you know, your basic, basic um, stock tailpiece type bridges. Um, again, don't know what kind of pickups were in it. Doesn't really talk about that too much. I could do some digging back to some of my magazines and maybe get a little bit more information. But uh, basically Eddie's messing around on the tour bus with this little guitar on the Fair Warning Tour and he, he comes up with the riff for little guitars, which obviously they couldn't include on Fair Warning. So when the Fair Warning tour is over, Eddie starts playing with this thing, and he writes little guitars. And that's where um, the little guitars song basically came from. It came from that, that particular uh, time frame. Eddie wrote the song pretty much on, uh, on the uh, tour bus, like I said, the 81 tour. And then when they got off the 81 tour, if any of you guys listened to the, um, um, the uh, Jazz Overlet uh, 1982 Eddie interview that they did on audio, um, Eddie's pretty candid in a lot of the stuff he says. He talks about, um, you know, when they got off the Fair Warning tour, he was just like, man, we wanted a break. And all of a sudden, you know, Warner Brothers is like, oh, we need another hit. So they put out Pretty Woman. It's like, okay, you guys got a tour down. They're like, what the hell? So here they are back on tour, so Eddie writes little guitars. So, you know, really cool picture. Um, there's a million of them out there, but, you know, here's a picture of Eddie, the Diver Down Tour, playing the little guitar. Yep, playing the little, the little one there. And it's always fun to watch him with that guitar, because he would literally just race around the stage and jump and fly and slide. And it was pretty cool. And I can never understand how a guy could play a little tiny guitar like this with such precision and be racing around and jumping and not make any mistakes. <laughs> it's hard enough for me to play it sitting down little or standing up, let alone running around the stage and jumping and off the risers and all that. But that was the little guitar. And pretty much the only time he ever played this was for that song. It made an appearance and that was the only time. Um, and the same thing for the, uh, the 1984 tour. It came out for that one song and that was pretty much all I'd ever did with it. My guess is it was very thin sounding because it's such a small guitar. Um, so I'm sure it wasn't one of Eddie's favorite guitars to play. But it certainly fit the bill for that particular song, obviously. Um, Leon, great info, good, cool. All right, so let's jump into another guitar. Um, we got a bunch of them to talk about here. Um, Before we go too far, let's look at this one here. Uh, compliments of my good buddy David Nesdal, the Circles guitar, which we talked about in the Fair Warning show I did. Bye, see you later, right? So Eddie was playing this guitar and the Rude guitar, the Weird Shapes guitar, in the Fair Warning tour, and he really loved it. Um, and he loved it because they, they had two-inch thick bodies on them. So for some reason, Eddie decides he's going to... Um, wants to repaint this guitar. And sometime around the Diver Down era, Eddie, Eddie, that's what he does, he repaints the guitar. So uh, we're gonna, there, there's a lot of misinformation out there on these guitars. You know, Johnny, Dave, and Jay, and myself, and a bunch of other folks over the years have really tried to clear that up. Because there's a, like we said, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and people think that, you know, this guitar was the rude and, you know, whatever. Um, but I will tell you, uh, and, I, and I stand firm to my beliefs on this, and like I said, if Dave or anybody out there you know, disagrees with me, please put it in the chat, but, but I'm pretty confident on all this, and, and, and I'm sure Dave and, and these guys will all agree with me because we talk about this a lot, and we've done our research. We've absolutely done our research. Um, this guitar turned into the Rasta strap, and the way we know that is because you can see through the Rasta paint job, you can see by see you later, you can see the woman's shape, uh, you can see the circles, you can see them underneath that paint job, all right? And again, this neck that was on the circles guitar is the one that's on the Frankie today, and it was the one that's been on the Frankie off and on for all those years, all right? 
So what I don't know, I'm actually gonna move this guitar over here. This is my pot for teacher guitar, but this is not part of the topic today. So the Circles guitar gets a repaint job, and we're not sure if it was Eddie or who did it, or Zeke, or it wouldn't be Zeke, or, or Rudy, I should say, because Zeke wasn't around at the time, I don't think. But the guitar gets, gets, a, gets a Rasta paint job, all right? And there's not any video supporting him playing it live in Diver Down, but there's pictures supporting him playing it live in Diver Down, so we know he played it. He definitely played it. And here's a picture of Eddie and Diver Down to her playing this guitar. This is the Rasta Strat. And again, um, this is the Circles guitar, okay? The by see you later. The Unchained guitar, if you will. So we're not, you know, like I said, we're not totally sure when it was painted, but it was painted sometime early Diver Down tour or prior to, in between Fair Warning and Diver Down Tour. That's when that, that's when that Circles guitar got repainted like this. Now mine is a present day version with the gold shaller hardware for Floyd and uh, some relicking down here and back here uh, and the headstock has been repainted, okay? Um, now this guitar very well could have had in the beginning, not now, or, or not, we'll talk about Dweezil Zappa getting it and everything, but this Rasta Strat very well could have had this original Frankie neck on it at that time. And I'm kind of thinking it did, okay? The original Frankie neck, which was on it before in the Fair Warning Tour when it was the Circles guitar. Because remember, Eddie was using that guitar, and it makes sense that he just took the neck off, repainted the body to look like the Rasta, um, and just put that neck right back on because when Eddie was playing this guitar in the um, Diver Down era, Diver Down tour I should say, it was a 21 fret neck, the headstock had not been painted yet, and um, you know he was, he was playing it kind of sporadically. It wasn't a guitar that he played all the time, but he definitely was, was using it. So I'm thinking that that was the original Frankenstrat neck that was still on that guitar in the Diver Down tour. And there's a lot of pictures backstage of Diver Down of Eddie actually warming up, and you can see the Rasta guitar behind it. So the Rasta guitar gets some play time, a um, little bit, not a lot, in Diver Down. And then after the Diver Down tour, the guitar kind of took a back seat, and we didn't really see it at all anymore. Was it on the uh, 1984 tour? I really doubt it, because Eddie was full-blown Kramer then. Full-blown Kramer 5150, 1984. Uh, and probably a, probably a whole bunch of 5150 type backups like he had on the 5150 tour. There is not any pictures other than a couple backstage of 1984 which shows you know the Hot for Teacher, it shows the 84 and the 5150 and the little guitar and that's about it from that particular tour. And there's no sign of the Rasta in the 84 tour. So my guess is the Rasta went back to 5150 at some point had the neck stripped off of it and then um, sometime years later I'm not exactly sure what year it was uh, Dweezil Zappa shows up at uh, Eddie's house and they're just hanging out because they're good buddies and Dweezil's like hey that's that green guitar like he said in the Norm's Rare Guitars uh, video that he did and Eddie's like you want it? Take it, it's yours. So he took it and uh, here's Dweezil playing it after he had it, playing it live. That's the real Rasta Strat. Now it's hard, again, you can't see, but the headstock is painted and the uh, body is painted and it's a lot more relict. So my guess is um, the guitar had either been put together with a different neck on it, um, which had been painted. Um, I think, I'm thinking they painted the headstock. I mean, it could have been Ed, it could have been someone from 5150, or it could have been Dweezil. We don't know who painted the headstock. Maybe it was Ed. But the guitar had some relicking. And um, one of two things happened. The guitar was either in this configuration or it was just a body and Dweezil either acquired a bridge and a neck or Ed just like, hey, grab some spare parts and it's yours. Um, we're not sure how that happened, but basically the same 
Um, Shaller Pickup was in the roster. This is the one that was in the roster during the uh, Diver Down Tour. Not the pickup that was in it in Fair Warning, uh, but he switched it out at some point in Diver Down. But it ended up getting a gold Shaller bridge, Floyd Rose style, okay? And um, painted headstock with original Gatto gold crown heads, okay? And this is how it ended up. Also with some gold uh, retainer and uh, uh, nut. And this is the condition this guitar is pretty much in today. It's got some relicking here, relicking back here, relicking on the back, back of the horn. Um, really cool guitar known as the Rasta Strat. And you'll notice that the, the route, uh, I call it the Johnny Bean route, <laughs> the kidney bean, the Johnny Bean route in the back, which is more proof that uh, it was the Circles guitar. And you can't see it, but oh, maybe you can see, see the circles, because this was a Circles guitar before. You see the circles in the guitar? See that? This is exactly what the real one was. It was painted right over. All right. All right, we'll continue on. Let's see if we've got any questions. That dweezel won't wash off. Oh, some smudge. Yeah, it had some vomit on it. Somebody in Diver Down vomited on this guitar, and there was, I haven't added that yet. I'm gonna use some dog food or something one of these times. But there's a little bit of vomit dripping down here, which is all crusted over, and it's still there today, which is kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> He refuses to wash it up. Hey, that's a total rock and roll guitar, right? All right. So now let's talk about another guitar that was on the Diver Down Tour. And I think I got a picture of it. Well, actually, I know I do. Right here. So just prior to the Diver Down Tour, Eddie does this show with one of his most favorite guitarists, Alan Holdsworth, right? and he plays live at the Roxy. And he just acquired this guitar. Now this is a purple Kramer Pacer with a Rockinger bridge on it. It looks black, but it's not, it's purple, all right? And basically the guitar that that is, is this one. And this is a real 1982 uh, B-Series Kramer Pacer, all right? This is about one of the most collectible ones you can find out there because it's purple and they didn't make a lot of these. It's got the Rockinger and um, the 22 fret neck and the classic Lawsuit Strat Head Kramer uh, uh, headstock. And this again also has Schaller gold crown head tuners originals. So this is a rare, rare, rare neck and you can tell it's a B serial number. Um, it's got the rubber behind the, the neck plate, which is something Kramer was doing back then. The two screws and the cavity cover. Um, you know, I mean, it's got the old school strap hook locks. I mean, they're just, it, this guitar is, is, this is a guitar that I, I waited a long time to get, and I, I acquired this guitar a couple of years ago. Thanks to a good friend of mine who I'm not, I won't mention his name on here because I don't know if he wants me to, but I will say David Nesdal was, my good friend David Nesdal was very instrumental in working with this gentleman to get me this guitar. And uh, this is a guitar that I'm so glad I had. So A had this exact same guitar. Exactly. Same year, everything. And that was it right there. Not this, well, not this exact one, but it was the same, came from the same batch, so to speak. This guitar could have been right on the, could have been right next to Eddie's when it was made. We don't know. So Eddie plays the guitar for a little while that way. And <clears throat> prior to the Diver Down Tour, I'm going to put this up just a little bit. You guys, whoops. You guys see this body right up here? That is called the Multicolored Tape Guitar. Now that's a, that is a, um, that's a replica body. And he took uh, white, orange, um, yellow, and uh, uh, blue tape, electrical tape, and he taped it all over. It's one of the only guitars that he put tape on. Not the only one. He had one from the Women and Children First Tour, a Yamaha, that he put red tape on. But one of the very only guitars that Eddie just got lazy on and said, ah, I don't feel like painting it, Let's just throw tape all over it. Uh, well, technically the original Frankie had pinstripe on it, but Eddie did take the time to paint it. So, <laughs> so that particular guitar gets a gets an interesting finish to it. Okay, so he tapes it all up, and it looks like this. And there's Eddie in the Diver Down Tour playing it. Okay, 
backstage. And I have a picture right here to support that he did play it live. All right. Again, like the Rasta, there's no video that we can see of the guitar. Not that I know of. Maybe I'm sure there is some out there, but I have not. I have yet to see it. But there's no video that we know of. Only pictures of Eddie playing his guitar live. And here's one right here. He's on stage and he's playing that guitar. Pretty freaking cool, if you ask me. Really cool. Um, that is considered the multi-colored tape guitar. Hang that bad boy back up there. The multi-colored tape guitar. And one of the most classic guitars. Now, why didn't I tape this one up? Well, because I really got that one. And this one really is, I, I'm going to throw a neck on that and just use it as a wall hanger because the multi-tape guitar really wasn't one of my favorite guitars um, out there that Eddie had. I like it, but... When I found this guitar, um, I should say replica guitars. When I found this guitar, I really liked the guitar, and because it's so rare, I really didn't want to mess up the, the you know, the pan. Not that tape would do anything. I mean, you can get the residue off with, you know, uh, rubbing alcohol and all. It's, I'm not worried about destroying the guitar. I just wanted to keep this in the original configuration, just because it's such a rare guitar. Maybe one day I'll tape it up, but I kind of doubt it. All right. So that is a. Um, another rare one. So the multi-tape guitar and the Rasta Strat were two Diver Down era guitars, but they never really got a lot of play time, but they did get some. All right, what do we got? That's going to bridge too far in replica. <laughs> yeah, right? That's me. Man, that Kramer is a piece of history. Yeah, I'll tell you it is, Tom. It really is. It's an awesome guitar. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's one of my it's one of my favorite, it's, it's my favorite Kramer I have. I mean, my 5150 is my favorite, but those are all custom builds. You know, I mean, they're exact replicas. Don't get me wrong. They, they play fantastic. Um, but this is a real, true manufactured Kramer, and it's be very hard to replace that. So, we've talked about the Frankenstrat. We've talked about the, um, the uh, Kramer Ad guitar, we've talked about the Rasta, we've talked about the uh, multicolor tape guitar. Now let's take a jump to a real rare guitar. How about we talk about this one? The yellow Diver Down um, <laughs> Secrets Cathedral guitar. So, <clears throat> don't ask me why Eddie wrote, um, uh, I'm not really sure why he wrote uh, um, I'm looking for a picture. Here we go. I'm not really sure why he wrote Cathedral on that particular guitar. Actually, I don't think he did. I think he wrote. I think he wrote Cathedral on a Strat. It was a. It was like a '59 Strat, and he says that the, the, the volume knob froze up when you know because he was turning it on and off. On it got so hot and just froze up. So Eddie didn't write us uh, um, Cathedral on this particular guitar. Um, he wrote it on a Strat, but when he played it live. He, he started out in Diver Down playing Cathedral on a double neck guitar, okay? And in the beginning of the tour, okay, the beginning of the Diver Down tour, A used the guitar that he played Secrets on because Secrets was recorded on a double neck 12 string guitar. Not this one and not the red one that he had made by Paul, but by this one. Now here's a picture of Eddie early in the Diver Down tour playing a Jimmy Page style Gibson double neck all right and he's playing on the top 12 string which means he's playing secrets and he only played that song on that guitar okay he would come out and he would play cathedral on the on that guitar okay on the six string he'd play cathedral down here and then he would switch to the 12 string this is the 12 string and he would play uh, secrets on the 12 string all right so if you listen to the interview where Eddie was being uh, um, uh, interviewed by Jazz Oberlet, and he says, "Oh, he says I got this, you know, 12-string guitar, and I record secrets on it, and, and you know, and uh, I do Cathedral on it because I had, you know, a Jimmy Page model because everybody was like, oh, it looks like Jimmy Page, you know. So he's like, all right, well, I guess I got to do something because I don't want to be, you know, looking like Jimmy Page or anybody. I want to be my own guy. So Paul Lunkert, again, who was the head builder and painter and, and everything um, at Kramer, who was at the time working with uh, George Felice, another awesome Van Halen guitar guy, Paul Lunkert uh, claims that he built this guitar. 
And he built two of them for Eddie. He built this one, which is a yellow, uh, black and yellow, called the Secrets guitar. And he built a red one, okay? And the red one had, didn't have, it had 12 string neck, like this, Kramer aluminum neck. But it didn't have a classic headstock like this one did. It had a hockey stick headstock, okay? So there was a red one out there too. Now, to my knowledge, Eddie never played the red one live. He only used this one. So he switched over and uh, I think it's in tune. And he basically played this guitar. All right. So um, let me see if it's in tune. Maybe I'll do a little something on it here since I got it. Right here. So he would come out. I'm not set for for. Um, for uh, cathedral, but he would come out and he would, you know, he would play. Okay, I can't play it now because I don't have the delay going. But he would play cathedral on this, all right, and then he would switch. Church in tune. It's a little out of tune, but he, then he would play. He would play secrets. Yeah, it's definitely out of tune. But he would play secrets on the twelve string. Alright, and then he would switch down for the solo, he'd go back to the sixth string. Alright, and that's what he would do for this guitar. So this was a very, very, very famous guitar. Um, and it's called the Cathedral Secrets Guitar, and it's a one of a kind. Alright, six string on the bottom. Kramer Classic Peak Neck, all right, and it actually had a Rockinger. This is my replica; is not a Rockinger. It's actually a Washburn, because I, I, I just I said this will be fine because he, ne he never had a bar on it. So I got a Floyd nut on it with no clamps, because you don't need the clamps, and I got a Washburn Gold Bridge, which looks kind of Rockingerish, all right, and uh, has a Schaller Badass Wrap Around Bridge, and that was like the real one, 12 string, six tuners down here, okay. And they go through, they're double notched in the saddles. And they go up and it's a 12 string and then there's six tuners up here, but basically it's backwards. You got six, you got six tuning keys here and six tuning keys here and basically you just wind the strings backwards. So the little holes here, that's where the balls go in. And then they wrap around here. It's basically the same thing on the other end. Really, really, really cool guitar. Um, Eddie's was a uh, aluminum neck. This is not an aluminum neck. It's painted to look like one, um, but it's a custom build by a friend of mine. And this is what the back looked like. It did look just like this, okay? And you can tell the holes where the balls go on the other six strings, all right? And the back of the guitar looked like this, all right? And it was notched like that. You guys see that? That's how the guitar was. It was notched. There we go. That's a better view. That's how they built it. So this, Chris Locke built this guitar for me. And the neck was built, well this is an original Kramer neck. And this neck was built um, custom by a real good friend of mine too, but Chris Locke, you know, basically knocked this one out of the park. And Chris Hubbard painted the body. So this is the Secrets Diver Down guitar. So Eddie played this on the Diver Down Tour. I think it weighs like a ton. But you never saw that guitar again, except in pictures in the studio. Okay, 5150. It would be fun to see him break that guitar out again today. But, you know, he'd probably have to play secrets on it. Well, he wouldn't have to, but that's what it was known for. And... I have a picture somewhere of Eddie playing that guitar. Oh, here it is. And there's a picture of Ed playing it in the Diver Down Tour. Yellow one. He's got like a baseball uh, batting hat on. <laughs> kind of cool. And there's also a picture 
of that guitar here. Oh, here's another picture of Eddie playing it. Here's a picture of Ed playing it. Here's a picture of the multi-tape guitar. These are the originals. Notice the lawsuit headstock. And uh, there is the, there's the real one. Notice mine's exact, except this is a real Rockinger. Mine's a, a different model. That's the 5150 guitar, my absolute favorite, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> so there's a little diver down trivia for you there. So, the last phase of this um, show, we're going to talk about some more rare Kramers. So we talked about um, Ed. Let's see if we got any questions, a real work of art. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, any pics of him playing that? Yeah, I just showed you. Thank you, Rob. Worth to know the setting for your Boss PS6. Awesome. Dan, uh, yeah, my PS6 is actually not on that. That's my little Yamaha THR 10X. Uh, my PS6 is on my Wet Dry Wet, but I could certainly sometime give you my settings for sure. That's where I get my balance sound, my Wet Dry Wet. That's my main rig. Um, but uh, yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Jimmy Ka, what's going on, buddy? I almost sent you a text to tell you I was going live, but I figured I'd sneak attack you anyways. So, um, the last piece of the Diver Down um, guitar phase would be some of the more rare Kramers, okay? Um, Diver Down was a very colorful guitar tour. And what I mean by that, he had all kind, not just necessarily colors, but he had some really, really cool guitars, a lot different. He had the little guitar, he had the double neck, he had the multicolored tape guitar, different colors. He had the Rasta Strat, he had the Franken Strat, he had the, you know, he had the Kramer Ad guitar, uh, you know, and then there was some, so those are the guitars that he basically played live, okay? But because it's a diver down era, um, my guess is some of these guitars may have made it on tour for at least a short period of time or maybe they didn't and what I mean by that is um, some of them were giveaway guitars some of them Eddie had backstage um, and some of them you know Eddie might have just played them for a couple hours and then gave them away um, we'll probably never know but what I would, because Eddie used, I mean, Eddie would have anywhere from five to 12 guitars with him on tour at that time, at that time, all right? And the 5150 tour, he had a whole bunch of 5150 backup Kramers, you know, which we talked about when I did my show, because I have a few of them. But at this time, Paul Lunkert and early 82, in Diver Down era, Paul Lunkert and um, uh, George Felice and all these guys, they were cranking out these Frankenstrat type guitars, okay? Now one of them was called the Vetus Gerolitis guitar, okay? Now Dave Nesdahl has, I think to my knowledge, has one of probably the only replicas of that guitar I've ever seen. Well, I think maybe Mark Blankenship has one too. I've never seen that, but I will say I've seen uh, Dave's and Dave is, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, guys. This is a picture I want to show you. Here's a picture of Eddie playing, uh, another one of Eddie playing the uh, uh, ad guitar, Kramer ad guitar. Notice he's got a, uh, he's got a cast on his wrist because he broke his wrist uh, a couple of days before, but he still played. The show must go on, you know. <laughs> um, so, let me find that picture here. Okay, here we go. So, Eddie was having all these guitars painted for him and some of them he probably never even saw some of them probably even not didn't even make their way to Eddie's house a lot of them did Eddie signed a lot of them then he gave them away he played some of them but he you know all these uh, again this is where I'm going to clear up some stuff here and we've talked about this on Johnny and Dave's and Jay's show um, I'm going to clear a lot of misinformation up when you see these Kramer guitars um, on auctions and stuff like that and um, people are trying to sell them and, and they're, they're you know they're these Eddie Van Halen you know striped guitars like this one here the auction guitar which we'll talk about you know they got the signature and all that you know they all say oh play the Diver Down Tour Eddie played this guitar in the studio on the Diver Down Tour <laughs> bullshit he didn't play it live he may have had it with him for a few days and messed around on it but he never played that guitar live he gave it away all right, and some of them he never even saw. So people are trying to sell some of these things for freaking big time cash, and most of them Eddie didn't even have anything to do with, because he has so many of them. And we'll never probably know 
all of the ones that he had. Right now to this day, Eddie has stacks of striped bodies, mostly 5150 style. Not too many of, well, I don't know, not too many of the Frankenstrat style, with, with, you know, the rear, the rear loaded stuff, or the, the top loaded stuff, I mean. Um, but you gotta be careful because so many people are, you know, they're, they're, they're claiming these were Eddie's, you know, tour guitars. They weren't his tour guitars. The guitars that I just showed you were the tour guitars of the Diver Down Tour, and that was it. He didn't play any other guitars in that tour. Yeah, he might have messed around backstage and did a couple things, and maybe one made, made an appearance here and there for a song or two, we'll never know, but they weren't tour guitars, okay? So the Vetus Gerolitis guitar, um, and again, I'm talking about this because they're Diver Down eras. Here's a picture, and you're not going to be able to see it, of Eddie in the middle playing the original Frankenstrap. And then you have Z, uh, excuse me, you have Rudy, all right, playing the Kramer Ad guitar, because Eddie probably gave it to him right around that time. And then you have Vetus Gerolitis right here, okay? And he is playing a Frankenstrat style Kramer guitar, all right? And I'm going to show you a picture right now. Dave Nesdahl has actually played this guitar before. That's really cool. Um, Eddie gave Vetus Gerolitis that guitar. And that particular guitar now is at uh, Tommy Coletti's, well, it wasn't there the last time I was there, but it, it belongs to Tommy Coletti who runs the music zoo, okay? And I was lucky enough to actually see this guitar firsthand. And I'm gonna show you a picture. Once I find it, well, I think it was the first time I went out and visited Dave. Um, and here's me back in, let's see, this was March 12, 2016. Here is me standing next to the Vetus Gerolitis guitar. It's got a hockey stick neck on it. And this is at the Music Zoo, all right? And it's definitely a really cool guitar. Here's the headstock of it. Here's the body, and you can tell it's very Frankenstrat styled. This was painted by Paul Unker. All right, look at the side. Look, look at the relicking. Little, little like matter of factly, like willy nilly, as Paul Unker says. They you know stripe these things up, you know, overspray and all that. It's really cool. All right. So those are some other pictures of, of that. that. That's that exact guitar that Eddie gave Vetus Gerolais. So that was a real one. That is one that Eddie actually did have in his collection, but it wasn't a tour guitar. He never played it live to our knowledge. All right. So be very careful on believing what Eddie had recorded with and played live. Like I said, the guitars I just told you in this show, those are the ones he played live and that was it. There were no others. Um, it doesn't mean that he didn't play one once in a while here and there backstage or whatever, possibly for a song, but for the most part, um, when you read the Guitar Aficionado article that Eddie did back in 2012, Eddie, he makes a comment, you know, any of those Kramers that were striped were not my guitars, you know, the only ones that were mine were the 5150 and the, the, um, uh, the double neck yellow. Eddie forgets a lot. Um, Eddie had hundreds of those guitars made for him. He signed a lot of them and he did play a lot of them. I think Eddie forgets about the Kramer Ad guitar. He forgets about, you know, the multi-tape guitar. He, you know, you're talking about guitars, you know, 30-something years ago. Um, you know, how's he going to remember that? Only us nerds, us geeks know that stuff, right? But anyways, you got to be careful of those. But um, the Vetus Gerolitis guitar, now the sister to the Vetus Gerolitis guitar is known as the auction guitar. And this is my uh, mock-up replica that you guys probably saw. And this is the real one. It's just a, it's a fake cardboard, it's, it's a real neck, but uh, it's a fake cardboard mock-up I did. This is the sister guitar to the Vetus Gerolitis guitar. Notice, the, 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 uh, they call it the auction guitar. And you type in on YouTube, Kramer auction guitar. Eddie Van Halen, you'll see this guitar. There's a guy talking about it. He calls it the the, the 5051 guitar or something like that. I don't know, whatever. Okay, they should have people do these things that actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> but uh, again, they say it's an Eddie Tour guitar, and he played it live. He never played this live. He signed the headstock, and then he gave it away. All right, and now it's going for millions of dollars or whatever, thousands, hundreds, of thousands of dollars because people think he played it live, but he never did. 
Um, look at the Paul Unkert painted this one. This is the sister guitar to the auction guitar. Okay, the grain and the splooge, and they would just throw whatever on them. You know, gold hardware, and most of these old ones had whale tails like this, whale tail Floyds. Um, whatever parts they could use, they just jammed them in there. You know, very unprofessional, hogged out humbuckers. You can even see a crack right down here where the wood split because the posts were so close to the humbucker route. It's so rock and roll, you know? And uh, this is the real neck here. I just cut a picture of it out. Um, and then this is another, just another neck. So this is the real neck, you can tell. And then this is the real headstock with a whale tail vintage nut. I just glued this on, I made it all life size. Um, you can just tell how, how crazy these things were. Six bolts in the back, said RD here. It wasn't even painted in the cavity. Uh, really, really cool. So here's another Kramer. Uh, Diver Down Era guitar, okay, known as the auction guitar. So you get the Vetus Gerolitis guitar, you get the auction guitar. Um, hey Johnny, we'll talk to you later, bud. Have fun. Um, Sage, or Sage, what's going on, dude? How you doing, man? Uh, Dr. Eagle says one million dollars. Yeah, I know. Uh, Leon, what do you think the Frankie the 5150 guitars would cost if they ever went to auction? million dollars two million dollars so hard to say um i mean some of eddie's wolfgangs and some of his other guitars that he's you know he's sold or, or have been auctioned off have gone in the hundreds of thousands of dollars you know fifty thousand dollars thirty you know anywhere from 30 grand to a million i mean I, you know the 5150 and the frankenstrap those those ones would be Boku dollars in the millions because they're just so you know it's it's it, those are kind of like um, Clapton's Blackie I guess you could say you know maybe even more so um, but I would definitely say the millions for those particular two so um, another Kramer that we're going to talk about is um, a guitar that Eddie did have his hands on all right and he did actually play. Uh, he didn't play it live that we know of, but he did mess around with it. And he actually, in my opinion, um, from talking to Paul Unker, did a little bit of painting on this guitar. All right. And this says Eddie builds a guitar. This is back in 1980, early 82, and shows Eddie with a body. And he's spray painting it. All right. Kind of cool. And there's Dennis Berardi there. Here he is again, doing a little bit of doing a little bit of work. Now I think some of this is just for photos. I don't think Eddie did it all. I think a lot of it was just for the photo shoot. But again, I'll, I'll reiterate a small story here in a few minutes of what happened with this guitar. But here you can tell Eddie's put, putting it together. You know, putting the neck on, doing some drilling, the hardware uh, drilling holes for the the neck plate. All right, and there it is, finished product. Now this guitar presently to this day is sitting in the Hard Rock Cafe um, in Los Angeles, California. And I was just lucky enough to be back out there visiting for the NAMM show back in January, um, visiting all my friends, Caleb, Johnny, and um, uh, all those guys, Mark and Pete, and I mean, you know, Craig, everybody, CHR, CHS Custom Guitars, all right. Now, here is I don't want to take, uh, I love this song. Here's a picture of the real one, the same one I just showed you. This is it today, sitting in back of uh, the Hard Rock Cafe in LA. Alright, some pictures, you can see how road worn it is. Really cool. Look at that, there's, there's a split in the wood where the original whale tail prototype screw post split the wood. Totally rock and roll. The black stripe, wear it off. These are all pictures I took on my phone right up close of the real guitar. Really, really, really cool. You can see they got matchbook covers underneath the pickup to build it up. <laughs> just, just amazing. This is called the Neptune guitar. All right. So that particular guitar, um, Eddie actually built, and then it was a giveaway guitar um, 
at the 1983 NAMM show, I believe. And if Dave Nesdow, you're watching this, you can correct me on that. So this is backstage, 1983 at the NAMM show when Eddie used to make appearances. Here he is playing the guitar at NAMM. And then this guitar was given away. And it made it through some different hands. It was owned by a couple of different people. Some people that I know actually got to play this guitar. Uh, had an option to buy it years ago and made it through three or four hands over the last 20 something years, 30 years. And then about, well, maybe about five, 10 years ago, it spent some time at the Hard Rock Cafe in uh, Orlando, Florida. And now, um, um, and now it's at uh, um, uh, Los Angeles, California. All right. And that guitar is this guitar right here. Here's my replica. Again, this is pretty much an accurate replica. This is a real Kramer body, and uh, this is one of the most incredible replicas of this guitar that I that I've ever seen. Had a whale tail bridge on it. That's not a real whale tail, but I kind of modded it to, to to do some different things to make it look like that. All right. Now, amazing, amazing guitar. So the story behind the spots, the black spots, is, is Paul Unkert had this guitar painted. All right pictures of Eddie kind of spraying. Eddie was in the factory that day in Neptune and um, came in and they were doing a photo shoot so they had the guitar all painted white and, and red striped. They went out to lunch Eddie comes in and just takes black spray paint while they're all out to lunch and just goes ksh, ksh, just literally hosed it down and the paint dripped and ran and um, you can just tell you know it, 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 it dripped all down through here, dripped here it was a mess, you know, he just made these polka dots with it. Paul and the crew comes back after lunch and they're just like, what the fuck? He ruined the fucking, I guess they were pissed. That's what Paul said, they were really bullshit that Eddie did that. But what are you going to do? It was a work of art, you know, so, so uh, it dried and they put it together and then all of a sudden, boom, here you go. Uh, and it was a guitar that Eddie had for a very short period of time and then gave it away. And uh, it was very awesome to be able to see this guitar, or the real one, and also see the Vetus Gerolitis guitar at the Music Zoo a couple years ago, like I was telling you. And the reason that this guitar is so accurate is because I was able to take those up-close pictures. Really interesting uh, headstock. Uh, it's more paddle-shaped. It's a little bit different. This here is only, the washer is here only because today it has that big washer so, that, so it stands up in the, um, in, in the glass case. Custom cut pit guard, probably out of like a, a Rubbermaid trash barrel, which is what I did with this one. I did that myself. And uh, yeah, typical, you know, crappy route for the humbucker. This is the Kramer Neptune guitar. All right. Now I saw a question in um, the chat here. Yeah, let's just see. This is a million dollars. Uh, Brad Miller, stupid question. I keep hearing a whale tail Floyd. What exactly is that? All right. Well, the whale tail Floyd. Actually, I'll just use, I'll use this here. I got one on my 5150, but it's easier to just use this. So if you look at a regular original Floyd Rose, these are brass tuners, but most of them are not brass, okay? Underneath these screws, they have these two, these finger plates, okay, uh, for to keep tension on these screws. They're totally useless. They, you don't need them, all right? They're tone robbers, and there's also a plate underneath that. The saddles on the newer ones are much longer, all right? The Floyd Rose on here is centered, okay? The original posts are very, they have a very short hat on the top of them. All right, in other words, a top. Um, the collar on the originals is kind of like this. It's got a, a collared piece here. Just it's, it's one of the original ones. It's a real thick Floyd collar, a little bit more in depth. The bar has a more bend to it. And the actual plate is actually a little smaller. All right, the saddle blocks are just basic metal, all right? Um, when you look at a whale tail, you can automatically see 
the squared off, it's called an FRT5. See how it's squared off? It's bigger, bigger piece of steel. All the tuning fine tuners are brass. Underneath these screws, there are no finger plates. They didn't use any of those. The blocks are all steel. Are all are all steel. The Floyd bar is straighter, and on the underside, the bar has a long stem on it. It's much longer. I think it's aluminum actually too, and it's just got a basic nut on it here. The saddles are much shorter. All right. And if you look at it, it, they call it a whale tail because it's, it looks like a whale's tail. It's longer. These are the FRT5s. And if you look at the Floyd posts, the, the, the pivot posts, the heads are very thick. They're much thicker than the newer ones. They were a lot more primitive back then. They are all hand-tooled, okay? Those are the, that's what they call a whale tail Floyd. They're very, very rare. They're in the $2,000 range if you can even find one. I actually have one on my uh, 5150, and uh, uh, I've done some modifications to a couple of my other uh, ones that would norm my replicas that would have a whale tail on it to make them look more like that. But that's what a whale tail is. It's called the FRT5. Very collectible, very old school, hand tooled, a little bit different shape. You really got to know what you're looking for. And the nuts on the whale tail uh, bridges are a little different too. I'm not going to get too into that, a little too geeky, but not on this show. But um, that's basically one of the main differences. We can have a conversation offline about that, but it is pretty cool. Google whale tail Floyd Rose and you'll, you'll definitely hear it. Um, what is the whale tail nut bolt in the back? Bolt in the back. Um, well, the whale tail nut. Um, let me see if I can find a guitar that has one. All right. Well, okay. My Kramer Neptune has. Well, they they have bolts in the back. That's what that clamps the nut down. Some are top loaded, but some of the originals are from the rear. So the whale tail nut, the prototype nuts, the, the clamps are smaller, and you'll notice the where the strings go in on the regular ones they kind of see how they kind of look like a V well on these whale tail original vintage ones they're more squared off they're more primitive looking alright and they're worth a lot more money again they were just the first installment of the Floyd Roses or one of the first earlier versions so they tweaked a lot of things the funny thing is, oh, and oh, the one thing I forgot to mention on the whale tails too, on the regular um, Floyds, they just have a regular block. On the whale tail bridges, they have a big, huge steel block. Big, huge steel block. Not a brass block, a steel block. And that's what adds um, incredible sustain. And just because we're talking about it, I'll show you my 5150 because I know you guys all want to see it because this is about as original as you can get. This is, you know, here's an original whale. Well, it's not original, it's a remake, but here's a whale tail bridge. See how it's different? See the posts, how they're, they have bigger hats on them? See how the Floyd Rose is off centered a little bit? See how long it is? Original brass tuners. See the nut on the bar? The bar is straighter. Big, huge steel block in the back. See the long stem on the bar sticks down. See how the saddles are shorter. A lot of differences. And it's got that whale tail shape to it. And they don't have any of those things underneath the underneath the screws here. So you get a nice flush resonant sound. That's basically the difference. All right. Now I saw a question come in. Sage says, that's the one that Eddie and Val were interviewed at the Hard Rock. No, you're talking about, I think you're, you're talking about this guitar, the Neptune? No. The one you're talking about is this guitar. The 85 Hard Rock giveaway guitar. This is the guitar that Ed and Val brought to the Hard Rock Cafe and Eddie was all drunk and being interviewed by that woman. And, um, this is the guitar. This neck was the original neck on the 1984 Kramer and the 1984 Tour. And he took it off and put it on this body. It's a Beretta body. This is what it looks like. 
and he put this neck on this body and gave it away and basically said it was one of the guitars that he played in the 84 tour. He didn't play it in the 84 tour. Eddie says in that interview, well, I wanted to give him one he played. He kind of he kind of half lied. He took the neck off that he played with the two stars on it because that's how they determined which one it was because it was the 84 guitar and the 5150. But he loved the 84 guitar, so he put another neck on that, ripped that neck off and stuck it on this Kramer body he had and he basically pawned it off and said, well, this is the body, this, this is the guitar I played as the backup to my 5150. The neck was, the body wasn't. This is the 85 Hard Rock giveaway replica. This is the one you're talking about. So, what else do we have? I see, says the blind man. <laughs> All face. So basically, that's pretty much it. Um, that is the Diver Down era. A lot of cool guitars, a lot of cool colors from these guitars. It's just really awesome stuff. And um, stay tuned because I'm going to do a show. Probably my next show is going to be the, uh, the specific show on the Frankenstrat. We're going to dissect this guitar from day one. Uh, some of it's going to be rumors because I got some pictures that I think were this guitar. It was either uh, sunburst or it was black. Um, there's some backstage stuff. Um, I'll just give you a little sneak peek here. It's pretty cool. I don't know if I can find it. Um, and then we'll call it. Uh, let's see, where is that? It's a really cool picture. I hope I can find it. Oh man, I have it, but it's going to take me forever to go through. Alright, let me try one other thing. Hang in there, guys. I want to show you guys something pretty cool. It's going to take me a little bit to go back and find it, but Chris Hubbard and I were talking about this. Uh, let's see. We're talking about the original Frankenstrap. Alright. And I have a picture of one of the guitars. And there's, there's a guy that did a YouTube video on this too. And he thinks that this could have been the original Frankenstrap. And I'm kind of on board with him. There's actually two guitars that I'm thinking it could have been. But, um... Bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves for two seconds. Because this will be a little sneak peek of uh, what we're going to be talking about. Maybe we can shed some light on Frankie here. I love this song too. Uh, let's see. Stand by. Stand by. You guys are going to like this stuff. Um, another question. You guys still with me? Hold on, we're almost there. <laughs> Hang on. You, it's going to be worth it when you see it. It's definitely going to be worth it when you see it. Oh, actually, while, we're, while I'm looking for that picture, here's a picture of Eddie from uh, 2001 or so with his sunburst guitar. And here you can see a nice close-up of his strap locks, welded with a set screw. Check that out, it's pretty cool. Which is what I'm doing too. I, for those of you guys that are watching that, hang in there, I'm still working on those. Oh, come on, where's that hand picture? Hang on, I'm almost there. Almost, here it is, here it is, here it is, okay. So this is a picture back in 1975, 74, 75, and this Eddie. And he's playing the Sunburst Frankenstein guitar, right? And you can't really tell, but it's got a humbucker. It's routed out for a humbucker, so he obviously routed it. And it's got a, got a rosewood neck. And here's another one of him with a black one. Black strap. All right, 74, 75, with a humbucker. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that is the Frankenstrap. That's the Frankenstrap. Why do I say that? Well, I'm going to give a little credit to Eddie, because 
well, why would Eddie went and bought another body for 50 bucks and another neck for 80 if he already had that guitar, which did just what he wanted it to? Um, he said he didn't have a guitar that did what he wanted. The Strat was too thin, the Les Paul just wasn't the shape he wanted, didn't have the bar. So he, as Eddie says, cross-pollinates a Strat with, uh, with a Gibson. Hogs out a, um, you know, a spot for a humbucker, throws a humbucker in there. The Strat has a bar, and now you know, he wires it to one pickup, one knob, and boom, there's your Super Strat back in the late, late 70s, right? So he did that with that guitar. So he had two of them, he had a sunburst one and a black one, and then he just needs to get another one and he goes out and he buys the Frankie body and then the neck. It doesn't make any sense, why would he do that? What I think is it was sunburst. He got the body and it was a sunburst guitar and he got that neck, not the, not the maple one we're talking about, he got the rosewood neck, all right? And played it like that for a little bit, hogged it out for a humbucker, then he's painted it black, right? White pit guard. Played it like that for a while. Then he decides he's gonna put tape on it and spray it white and pull the tape off. And that's what happened with this. And that's how it, how it came about. Those guitars are the same ones that was the Frankenstrap, okay? That is my take. All right. That's right after he bought it. It was sunburst. It's the Frankenstrat. It's got a humbucker in it. Why would he change it? It doesn't make any sense. Why would he change it? Here's another one of them playing it. Sunburst. There's the Ibanez Destroyer after he painted it white. Not silver. It was white. He painted it silver after that to silver and burgundy, but it was white then. Okay. Now he just decides he's going to paint it black. All right, the white pick guard. And then he plays it like that for a while, and then he spray paints it white with tape on it, switches the neck out with a maple neck, and then we'll take it from there for the Frankenstrat show. Um, that may stir up a little debate, but uh, again, why would Eddie have two of those guitars and then decide he needs to go get a different one? And that's the same guitar. He said he only did that once. He cross-pollinated a Gibson with a Fender. That was that Frankenstrat guitar. And uh, um, then he ended up painting it white, taped it up. Painted it black when it was sunburst, then painted it white, pulled the tape off, put a maple neck on, there's your Frankenstrat. So we'll get into that debate at a later time, but uh, there's just a little teaser for you. We'll be talking about all that. But I think as the more information we get over the years, like the, the neck that was on the Circles guitar is the neck that was that is on the Frankie today, a lot of this stuff's coming out because we're seeing a lot of these pictures. And I mean, you know, in all fairness to Eddie, he can't remember that stuff back in those days. Why would he? You know, he, he's not sitting around like Eddie always says. He goes, he doesn't sit and listen to his music. He just writes new music. He doesn't sit around listening to his old records. So he sure as hell doesn't sit around looking at old magazines and photos of himself. He's always thinking new. It's us losers that sit around and look at old pictures and bootlegs and hear all that stuff. We're the experts on this stuff. So that's the Frankenstrap, I'm telling you right now. So, um, I saw the video you're talking about, the guy makes, yeah, and, and JR, I'm going to take it one step further. JR is talking about the black one, uh, or, or the sunburst, one of the two. They're both the same guitar. It was sunburst, then he painted it black. And he taped it up, painted it white, pulled the tape off, put pinstripes on, a different neck. That's the Frankie. They're all the same. Again, why would Eddie do it three times? Makes no sense. He only did it to one guitar, and that was the Frankenstrat. So that is the Frankenstrat, both of those versions. So I want to say thank you very much, guys. Um, let's just look at what we got. That one, Eddie and Val were interviewed at the Hard Rock. We talked about that. Yet again, your show has been so cool, Rob. Thank you. It's amazing to learn this stuff through the guitar thing. Leon, th you know, thank you. I'm no expert on this stuff. I just have a passion for it, um, along with firearms, martial arts, you know, we'll leave it at that. Uh, but uh, I just enjoy this stuff. I, and I'm always learning stuff, and I'm learning it from you and having conversations with, you know, EVH guitar nuts. Um, it's, it's always fun, and I, and I always have a great time with you guys doing this stuff. 
and we'll keep on doing it. But thank you very much. I, I'm glad you're learning stuff. Um, I'm still learning stuff. And, uh, you know, like I always say, I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, uh, I see two more replicas coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? It's never end. Daniel, boss, PS6 settings, wet, dry, wet, blue. All right. You guys want to be a pain in the ass? All right, here we go. I'm kidding. All right, I'm going to read it off, okay? So pay attention, Dan. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do it like this. Since we're going to call the show. Yeah, where's the flip-flop? Hmm. Trying to switch the screen. All right, well. All right. Here it is. Whoops. The hell. Okay, I'm going to ex explain them in a second, so don't worry if you can't see it. All right? So, the balance is about 12 o'clock straight up the shift is at one o'clock the key or excuse me the harmony shift is at one o'clock the key is f and the mode is set to detune okay that is the balance in a box setting right there okay um so that, that's it i'll say it one more time the balance is at 12 o'clock, the shift is at 1 o'clock, the key is set to F, and the mode is detuned, okay? And that will give you that real harmonized, heavy chorus, um, I don't like to use the word process, but kind of balanced process sound. Um, and then if you just have a nice delay going, you don't, you don't need to have a wet dry wet rig like I do. You don't have to have two PV5150 combos with different delays going through them and harmonizer and then a 5153 50 watt head with a cat. You don't need all that. Yeah, it's cool. I never had all this stuff until like two years ago and I've been doing this stuff for 25, 26 years. And I never had a rig like this ever. I played through a combo amp with a DD3 uh, delay um, with a PS6 harmonist. And, you know, and I had a flanger and a phaser and stuff. But all those years, I just play with that, and I got an incredible sound. People would be like, whoa, you know, I mean, when I do my show, you guys are all like, whoa, what kind of sound are you getting? That's, that was my little, that, that's, that's my little Yamaha, you know, or my little Marshall practice amp. I used to use a little Roland microcube, and people thought it sounded amazing. It's, it's, I'm telling you, you don't need to have millions of dollars of sound equipment to sound like that. Um, I finally got a nice rate here, but I'm telling you, just a DD3 basic delay or something better or whatever with those settings on a PS6 Harmonist. I'm not going to slam the EVH chorus pedal. I had one for about six months. I sold it because the PS6 to me sounds better because the PS6 has a true detune and that's what Eddie was using back then. It was a detune setting. Um, it's magic box. Like I said, I call it balance in a box because that's what it sounds like to me. Um, but uh, yeah, no problem, dude. Uh, let me know how you make out with it. And I'm going to be, I did a balance uh, show um, a few weeks ago too, and we talked a little bit about the setting, but I'm gonna do another in-depth, um, um, I'm gonna do another in-depth show on, on my setting, the wet, dry, wet, and we'll talk exactly how to get that setting, okay? Um, I saw a video where a guy, sees a knot in the lower horn of the Frankie and that's why the Frankie has a paint bulge. Yes, you're right. Totally forgot about that, Leon. Yep, you're right. I forgot about that. And we'll talk about that in the Frankie show. Um, I'm sure Eddie would be in awe of your VH collection, Stein. Well, I'm hoping one of these days to meet him and actually just show him some pictures because thanks to that, dude, I'm freaking poor as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully one of these days I get a chance to meet Eddie. I've always wanted to meet him and just, you know, show him what he's created for me in my life, you know. Um, just shake his hand and say thank you. That's all I want. Just a picture with him and say thank you. Um, hopefully one of these days I can meet him. I did shake his hand back in 04, but I never really got to officially meet him. But um, TH uh, THR 10X, best bedroom amp. It is. It is. Um, they're, they're great little amps. They really are. I love them. Please do the video if you can, bro. Thank you for all your help. Oh yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll definitely do one on that sound. We'll, we'll, we'll focus right on the PS6. Um, the nice thing is, is when you're playing through that PS6, and then you you get to the point where it just sounds like standard sound, you know? 
but then you turn it off and you're like whoa where'd that sound go you know and you just miss it so much but um, um yeah it's kind of cool it's my favorite sound but uh guys thank you so much i really appreciate it again we always have a lot of fun on here um, one of these days i'm gonna get on we're gonna do just a fun show we'll just answer questions and talk about riffs and stuff and whatever you guys want to see um and uh you know I, I, i'll just put a post out on instagram and just say hey um bring your questions what guitars do you want to see and we'll just i'll leave it up to you guys and we'll just roll off of that but i'll keep the shows going next one will probably be the frankenstrat one still going to do some fitness shows for you guys if anybody's looking for some basic core fitness stuff um some interesting stuff we can talk about and um uh, my uh, my YouTube channel, Rob's uh, EVH Guitars TV. Obviously, you're watching it now. Check it out. Check out the other videos. Um, thumbs up. I, I really appreciate them. Thumbs down. If you thought something was kind of sucked, I, that's fine too. Please please put it down because a, a good critique is an honest one. And uh, it's nice to always hear good things, but sometimes it's nice to be humbled a little bit and say, "Hey, dude, you know you're wrong on that," or or whatever. You know, it it, it, it keeps us balanced, so to speak. You know. Um, no pun intended. Um, my Instagram, um, RobCJ5150. Subscribe to me on Instagram, Facebook, Rob Johnson. Love to see you guys. Um, thank you so much. Oh, before I go, I'm glad I saw this. We were talking about the Frankenstrat with the Kramer neck on it. Here's a picture of the Frankenstrat back in 82. Here's the headstock, 22 fret uh, uh, neck, right? See the sand mark where the Kramer logo was sanded off? This is one of the lawsuit headstocks. See that? He sanded the logo off. Probably because, like I said, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the heat they were getting legally, um, um, you know, from, from Fender. So, um, and then when Eddie had the, you know, when he had the, the, the chicken hawk neck and the hockey sticks, the Kramer logo was right back on there again. Um, and again, at the Roxy, when he played this guitar in the purple face, he had a piece of black electrical tape over the Kramer logo. But then sometime in the Diver Down Tour, for whatever reason, he pulled the tape off and he just left the Kramer logo there. Kind of interesting. He didn't really bother too much with that one. But um, it's a shame EVH does not interact with these fan-based podcasts. You know, I think Eddie is aware of these shows. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't think. I know he is. I know, I know Eddie has watched Johnny, excuse me, Johnny Bean's show. I know he watches Eric Broadbent's show sometimes um, because George Lopez has been on there. I know George has talked to Eddie about this stuff. Um, I would imagine there's some other shows he's seen, probably seen some of Tone Talk stuff. He's probably seen some of uh, um, uh, the Tone Kings shows. Maybe Steve from Boston. Those are all awesome guys, awesome shows. Um, I would like to think he maybe has seen my show. I'm still pretty new. I mean, I've been doing these shows for years, but um, I just started my own channel and I'm building up my fan base and subscribers and all that, thanks to you guys. Um, I would really like to think that Eddie would, you know, think some of the stuff is pretty cool. Um, I guess maybe we'll never know unless somebody reaches out, but I would certainly love to, uh, to hear from him. And, I, and on that note, I do want to say one thing. And that is, I build these replicas, and um, I've built them for 20-something years. I don't sell them. I build them, um, and I build them for my own enjoyment. And there's other people out there like Chris and Nick that, that build them also. Um, but I do it for my own enjoyment. And um, I want to say one thing uh, as far as the EVH brand. You know, um, yeah, I build these guitars, the custom Kramers and all that. And maybe Eddie Van Halen doesn't see a dime from that, or the EVH line doesn't. But I will say that for the last 20-something years, um, between Ernie Ball Music Man guitars that I purchased and PV Wolfgang guitars that I've purchased and PV 5150 amps and now the EVH stuff, you know, um, these are just two EVH guitars that I have, an original Stealth and an original Tour Relic, okay? These guitars are um, guitars that have put dollars in EVH's pocket. And the reason I'm saying that is because, yeah, I build all the replicas, but I also put dollars in EVH's pocket because I love the brand. It's a great brand. It's amazing. Um, Chip Ellis and um, you know Matt Brook, all those guys from you know from EVH's personal assistants to the companies that he works with, they put out some amazing products. 
I'm still a big fan of the Ernie Ball Music Mans, the PV Wolfgangs, and now the EVH line, and I will continue to support those brands, as well as all the other stuff that they put out. From pedals to EVH Flanders, the phasers to to choruses to EVH wah pedal, I mean, you know, you name it, I've bought it over the years, and I will continue to support that because I I love Eddie Van Halen and the band Van Halen. Um, so I want to make sure I just give a little kudos to the EVH brand as well because they're keeping the spirit alive, okay? So maybe one day Leon, Eddie will start kind of coming around and, and, and interacting with some of these folks that do these shows because I think um, there's a lot of love for him and, and the history that he's created. Um, that's why we do it. And I would like to think that a, a level of appreciation from him would be nice no, the band doesn't owe us anything. Um, they don't. They don't owe us a plug nickel. But I do think they should recognize that we have been the ones to make them rich over the years because we're the ones that continue to buy their music, to go to their concerts, to buy their supplies, to buy their merchandise, to buy their guitars, to buy their amps, to buy their pedals, to buy their, their flip-flops, their towels, you name it. Um, we do it because we love them. And we will continue to do it. So it would be nice to, you know, be able to say thank you to the man. But in the meantime, I just wish Eddie well, Alex well, the rest of the crew. It was great to see Sammy and Mike last week at Foxwoods, um, keeping the Van Halen Sammy era alive. Um, I would love nothing more than to see a reunion with Roth and Sammy and Mike and have them do a set of Sammy era songs and Dave era songs and have Wolfgang in the mix and Michael there. Um, it's not about the money, but that would be a nice farewell. It really would. And there's a whole bunch of, you know, from uh, 86 to 96, and even the, you know, learning to see you know, for breakfast, and it's about time stuff too, but there's, a, there's about 12 years of, of, of Hagar era material that is just being, you know, ignored, and it's such a shame. That's my take on it. So, anyways, just want to say, um, uh, popping in for lunch and turned in Brian we're ready to go but uh, roll back roll back and you will see the whole show but thank you for jumping in um, and I thank you guys I thank the band Van Halen and Eddie Van Halen for giving us all this fun to talk about and I, I wish the guy well and I hope he stays healthy and I really look forward to seeing those guys live again um, Tom thank you very much thank you everybody for watching and stay tuned and we'll see you guys soon